So what are the NAT variations you'll work with? There are three, static, dynamic, and NAT overloading. With static NAT, entries are manually created. This is a one-to-one -one mapping of an unregistered IPv4 address to a registered IPv4 address. You'll see this used most often to publish an internal device to an external network. Alternately, dynamic NAT maps an unregistered IPv4 address to a registered IPv4 address from a pool of registered IPv4 addresses. This is a many-to-many -many relationship configuration. And finally, there's NAT overloading. This is a dynamic NAT variation that maps multiple unregistered IPv4 addresses to a single registered IPv4 address, a many-to-one relationship. This is accomplished by using different ports and is also referred to as PAT, which is Port Address Translation. Now, with everything, there are some pros and cons. Let's look at both. First of all, with IPv4, we've been running out of addresses. And if you've listened to those Y2K people, I think we were supposed to be completely out a while back. Anyway, NAT does help alleviate the shortage by conserving public IP addresses. NAT overloading allows multiple resources on the internal network to be publicly accessible without using up those additional IPs. It can also avoid administrative headaches. If your public IP range needs to be changed due to switching ISPs, you don't have to change IP addresses throughout your network. You can maintain the same internal scheme and only modify those public IP addresses. NAT's also known for enhancing security. It's not a firewall replacement. Don't think of it like that. It does, however, add a layer of security, hiding your internal addressing scheme and topology from the internet. But the drawbacks? Let's consider those as well. With NAT, internet hosts appear to talk directly to the NAT device and not the actual internal network host. This can create a few issues. First, performance. You're adding another device in the chain of communication, and on top of that, all those packets to the internal host will have to be modified. That takes time and processing power from the router. And as mentioned, we are modifying packets. Some applications simply don't work at all in that scenario. Digital signatures, for one, can break. Static NAT mappings may help resolve the issue in some scenarios, but not always. It can also make it much more difficult, if not impossible, to trace packets between the actual source and destination. This can make troubleshooting connectivity and communication issues a nightmare. And if you're setting up a tunneling protocol and using IPsec, the header modifications can invalidate the checksums that IPsec performs. That means IPsec's going to break. An application such as FTP can be disrupted if both ends of communication are using NAT. So while there are benefits, these are just some examples of how NAT can also degrade performance and add a layer of complexity in your network.